This is Sicily, home to the historic Targa Florio. Whoa. Today we're driving one of the most storied mountain courses in the world with the new Subaru WRX TR and the BRZ TS. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Hello and welcome to Italy. I've flown halfway across the planet to drive performance-focused versions of the new WRX and BRZ on one of the most famous and dangerous mountain routes in the world. It's on these roads that the Targa Florio first ran in 1906. By 1977, the race had changed to a shorter course, but with multiple deaths and injuries, the police stopped the race in the fourth lap a very sudden and unceremonious end to one of the greatest mountain races of all time. Of course, you can still run on the very roads that drew Porsche, Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, Bugatti, Lancia, Maserati, and Mercedes all the way to Sicily, albeit so long as you follow the traffic rules and regulations. Today, we're hoping to get a small taste of that past glory with a pair of sporty Subarus. Later, I'll be driving the new 2024 BRZ TS, but I'm going to start with this, the 2024 WRX TR. And at the end of the video, I'll even pick my favorite. Along the way, we'll take in some of the beauty of the Sicilian countryside. Based on the standard WRX, which was mostly all new in 2022, the TR adds a sharper handling package with stiffer springs, retuned dampers, and a modified steering rack. It also comes standard with sticky Bridgestone Potenza S007 tires. To save weight, the sunroof is deleted. Seats get upgraded to Recaro buckets. The roads today are going to be very tight and twisty. Thankfully, the TR is equipped with six piston Brembos up front and two pots in the back. These are supported by larger pads, rotors, and an improved brake master cylinder. Power is still unchanged, which is unfortunate. Under the hood is the same 2.4 liter Boxer 4 that was introduced with the 2022 model. It produces a peak 271 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. But it's still pretty easy to find tuners that can give the WRX some extra performance if you need it. It just costs a few bucks. New for 2024, this is also the first WRX with Subaru's EyeSight system and a manual transmission together, bringing a higher level of safety to the performance sedan. The new WRX TR does start at $42,775 US dollars, including destination. And enough talking, it's time to hit the stages, I mean the streets, of the Targa Florio. So you might be asking, why do we have a Subaru WRX here, of all places? Well, even though the historic Targa Florio as we knew it ended in 1977, it did continue on as part of the European Rally Championship. Further, in 1995, it was won by a Subaru Impreza, and in 1999, it was won by a Subaru WRX. So we're gonna be driving on the Grande course today, which is the larger version of the Florio. There's multiple routes, and here in Italy, they even include handy signage uh, to tell you which route you are on. So we're at the very start, which is the lower section near Palermo, and we're gonna be heading up into the mountains. And already, I am so stoked. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. For 2024, there are a number of changes just to all the WRXs. Gone is the entry-level infotainment system. Now, the 11.6-inch system that supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly is standard equipment. I'm kind of happy to see that because that old dual-screen entry-level system just, it looked bad. Also, the chassis have been stiffened. Now, that's partially to improve handling, but also to meet more stringent crash requirements. So even though the WRX was all new in 2022, for 2024, yeah, they are making structural improvements. Just driving on these roads, you can really feel like you're part of this history of the Targa Florio. I mean, driving through the corners, I mean like there, we just passed the original grandstands of the event. 
and you really just can kind of feel like that history watching you as you come around the corners. It's, it's really cool. I'm getting tingles. <laughs> Let's talk about this WRX TR. So originally when the TR came out, it was several years ago, I think it was around 2006 or so, there was a TR edition. And at that point it was known as Tuner Ready. Basically it was a stripper version of the WRX uh, that you could get basically like basic radio, if it had a radio at all, I don't even remember at this point. Uh, but basically it was a entry level trim that was ready for you to put on your own favorite modifications. Now in time, what that became is just the base WRX, because when you buy a base WRX, they assume you're gonna change the wheels, the tires, the radio, stuff like that. So there really wasn't room anymore for a base trim because you already have a base trim. So this new tuner ready version, the new TR, uh, and it's unofficially tuner ready, that's not the actual meaning of TR at this point, uh, is an enthusiast level trim. One of the other big changes for WRX now in 2024, and that's not just for the TR, is the fact that it has eyesight. Yeah, that's right. They actually have their safety system here. And it's the first time that you can get it on a manual transmission vehicle. Historically, Subaru has avoided putting it on the manuals because in the safety situation where it pulls off to the side of the road, stuff like that, uh, you couldn't do that with something that has a manual clutch because it's just going to stall. Well, they've apparently either just ignored that or they've engineered around that. I don't really know, but the fact is, is you can now get the active safety system on this vehicle and it, it is fully loaded. I mean, it even has the adaptive cruise control with lane centering, which is very cool to have on a vehicle like this. The roads here are incredible and that varies from incredibly awesome to really incredibly horrible. They seem to like have these sections where the road sinks and they just put up a sign and then several decades go by and they just let it stay that way. But that's okay. It really uh, makes me happy that I took the WRX on this particular stage because later we'll be driving the BRZ. But on these type of roads, the WRX is just amazing because of course we do get that all-wheel drive system to help us pull us out of the corners. Now, all-wheel drive system on this one, because it is, yes, the stick shift, that means it has a viscous coupler in the middle, and that viscous coupler is gonna split power 50-50. Yeah, it is a straight 50-50 split. In the back, I'd like to say that there's a limited slip differential, but there's not, it's just an open differential. In the front, we do have torque vectoring courtesy of brake vectoring so yeah it'll do a slight tap on the inside wheel to help rotate the vehicle into the corner and then release it as I throttle out now if you're worried about that wearing down the brakes pretty much every car manufacturer has some version on that on most of their cars and it it is so minimal the amount of braking applied compared to actual braking that it's inconsequential So because this is the highest performance WRX you can now get, you might be asking, well, is the TR the replacement for the STI? Because of course, when we first drove the new WRX a couple years ago, Subaru said the STI was right around the corner. And then a month later, they said it wasn't, it was killed. It doesn't exist anymore. <sighs> so yeah, does the TR replace the STI? Not really, and there's multiple reasons for that. It's not just the fact that it, you know, the STI has the STI badge on the front. It really comes down to the fundamentals of the car. Yes, this is a stick. Yes, the STI has a stick. That is pretty much the end of the comparison on these two transmissions. The STI transmission is built to handle just loads of power. This one, not quite so much. Also, the design, the DCCD, the ability to vary the amount of power going front to back depending on the driving conditions. That is something you just don't get with this. You get straight 50-50 all the time on this car. And there's some conditions like right now, I would love, love to have at least a 40-60 split on this, but I don't. So I get a little bit more push into the corners because yeah, 
it's you can't use throttle to rotate the vehicle when you're in a 50 50 split also the sti has a diff in the back so you just get better grip when you come out of the corners power shifted left to right in a more functional way than the simple wheel braking. Just when it comes down to it, there is no comparison with the STI. The brakes are now six pop Brembo's, which is what you used to be able to get on the STI. So that is a very welcome improvement, of course. So the tires on this are Bridgestone Potenza S007s, the same tire that you'd get with a Ferrari. F12 Berlinetta, and they are pretty amazing. On these roads today, however, out here, not only is the road surface very cold, it actually is holding moisture. And when you stand on this stuff, it is incredibly slippery. You can't really tell about it on film, but there's actually I'm getting a little rain on the windshield here. Uh, it's a little wetter than it looks. So when you actually are standing on this stuff, very slippery. I don't know what kind of rock they use out here, but it ain't grippy. The WRX, especially when equipped with the manual transmission, is just going to deal with understeer in the corners. It's just a fact. Uh, that means that when you're going into the corner, it wants to push that nose off the road. It doesn't want to rotate into the corners. And the reason is actually pretty normal. I mean, most modern vehicles are designed to do what is called understeer. So that in the event of a panic movement, you don't flip around and go back first into an accident. It basically pushes you into the accident in a way that is safe and uses all the crumple zones of the vehicle. However, with performance cars, that's something you don't want. But the fact is, especially with all wheel drive vehicles, it's just something that's always present. And that's one reason why I really love the STI because you can just dial so much torque to the back that it actually handled a little bit like a rear wheel drive vehicle, but you still had that grip coming out of the corners like an all wheel drive vehicle. So right now I'm behind one of the BRZ TSs. Uh, the TS stands for tuned by STI. And I'm looking forward to driving that a little bit later, but I'm happy on this segment to have the extra grip of all wheel drive because it is raining out now <laughs> and these roads were already not so grippy. Can you imagine just driving this in like a prototype car? Like, what the heck? Now, obviously, these are not the same roads they were, the road surfaces they were using back in, you know, 1920, but, uh, or even later when they started to get really fast, like around the 1950s, 1960s. But mercy, how crazy must have you been to do this race? Like, the full run of the course has 2,000 corners. 2,000! The Nürburgring, yeah, it has 180. <laughs> 30 through town. And it's funny, like you're out here lefting, left, right, left, right, left, right, and then you're like, boom, village. Yep. Take in all the cars we don't get over in the US. Like, uh, Oh, wow, actually, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there we go. Fiat Panda. Yeah. Akisa, whatever the heck that is. Peugeot. I grew up with Peugeots. My grandfather was a diesel mechanic, and he actually had uh, a whole bunch of uh, Peugeot 504s. That smell. That diesel smell. <laughs> Come on, you can get through. You're in a BRZ. You just gotta close your eyes and hit the throttle. It'll be fine. So many Fiat Pandas out here. And they all look like they've been driving here on these roads at full speed for like decades. Of course, we are driving through the mountains and we are on an island. So that means, yeah, weather is a little unpredictable. It has changed from being fairly clear and kind of dry to now being rain and fog. I think we're literally driving through a cloud though, because we're, we're going an elevation up 3,000 feet from where we started. I love the pedal position in this vehicle. It is so easy for my large feet 
two heel toe. I do a rolling left, right, and I just find it, it's just a natural feel in this vehicle. Of course, I've driven so many WRXs. This is kind of like my, my, my home car, I guess you could say. <laughs> It is interesting that Subaru hasn't really done much with the manual transmission uh, beyond developing the awesome one in the STI. They pretty much have just left it as it is. You know, it's it's beefy enough to handle all the power you need, so it's not going to fail. Uh, but they haven't like put on this whole like you know auto blip on downshift and that kind of stuff. Customers just aren't asking for it, I guess. And it's interesting, the customer of the WRX, it is one of the youngest buying segments in the industry. It's like the number five youngest buyer buys a WRX or a BRZ. How cool is that? Of work has been done here to the suspension and the steering. They've adjusted the steering feel and a lot of it has to do with going to a different tire and shorter sidewall and basically recalibrating the car around what it comes with from the factory in this configuration. So if you're looking for light years of improvement, uh, no you're not going to get that. But the 2022 WRX, when it came out with the new generation that we're driving here, it was already way better than the old one steering feel is great. You can definitely feel what's happening with the tires, whether you have traction or not, and quite a lot of today is not. <laughs> the new WRX TR is just such a joy to drive. I mean, Subaru has really nailed the formula. Could it have more power? Yes. Does it need it? I would argue it really doesn't, especially because you look at who buys this car. These are these are younger buyers. Do they need to start with 400 horsepower? I don't think so. Also, all my time driving today, I've never wanted for power. I have plenty. Now, is it as fast as some of the newest electric cars or yada, yada, yada? No, but this is not a very expensive car either. You're looking around 42,000 US dollars. And really, that's below the median price of a new car. So that's a pretty good value. And then if you actually look at the entry-level WRX, which has the same engine, the same transmission, uh, you're looking at a close to $32,000. Again, a great value. Would I spend the extra 10,000 to get the TR? Yes, I would. And for multiple reasons, the seats are fantastic. Those six pot brakes, you don't really wanna add those in the aftermarket. I mean, you can do a brake job, but why buy brakes and then add new brakes and then you're just kind of have two sets of brakes. But the six pot brakes are great. The tires, wheel package, just everything is just, it's just so good. This is like the ultimate version of the modern WRX. And I think it's, I'm, I just think it's fantastic. So I didn't fly all the way to Italy just to drive the new WRX. I'm also gonna drive the BRZ TS, which we're gonna hop into right now. That's a Panda again. Everything is a freaking Fiat Panda here. Oh, there's a Piero. Nice. With the condition of the roads here, I'm kind of shocked like not everybody drives a lifted, well, then again, the Fiat Panda there has like, was that eight inches of ground clearance? That's like perfect for Italian roads. It's small, it has ground clearance, and it's ugly. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about denting it, I guess, because it's not gonna really take away from the looks. <laughs> I mean, if I brought like a whole warring party out here and I'd be like, look at this village up on this hill, and I'd be like, yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> it's so, it's a little harrowing up here. You could die going in your yeah, seriously. I mean, don't don't go day drinking because you may not survive the walk out. <laughs> the WRX on the roads of the Targa Florio, absolutely amazing. But I think a car that might be better suited to this is something that's smaller, more nimble, rear wheel drive. Of course, I'm talking about the BRZ TS.
Like the standard BRZ, this new performance-oriented TS features a naturally aspirated 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder boxer engine, making 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. The BRZ is rear-wheel drive only, giving it a very different driving characteristic to the turbocharged all-wheel drive WRX. The BRZ TS gets STI-tuned Hitachi dampers, four-pot Brembo brakes up front, along with two pistons in the rear. Dark gray metallic 18-inch wheels are standard, and they're wrapped in high-performance 21540 R18 Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. The BRZ TS starts at $36,465 US dollars with destination, making it the top dog in the BRZ lineup. Ah, so here I am inside the BRZ TS, and yeah, it's a very, very different feel from the WRX. This car was built from the beginning to be a sports car, a rear wheel drive sports car. And it's kind of funny because, I mean, all of their Subarus, they're all wheel drive. This is the exception. And the story goes, Subaru developed this car in conjunction with Toyota. And then Subaru was thinking about maybe doing an all wheel drive version of the BRZ. And then they drove it and they're like, no, it's perfect. You want an all wheel drive, get the WRX. But the driving dynamics, the feel, everything is totally different. This isn't just a smaller two-door WRX. This is something very special. And I've driven lots of BRZs and I really enjoy them, but jumping out of one and into the other, yeah, it's a little shocking. This is much more cockpit feeling. I'm lower to the ground. This has a lower center of gravity than, ready? A Corvette C8. Like this is supercar levels of center of gravity. It's amazing. Now it is interesting that the shifter here has reverse off of first, not off of sixth. So jumping out of the WRX and into the BRZ, it's a little confusing trying to find that reverse. Quick note on the interior. It's interesting that Subaru has not gone to their big touchscreen here. It's a much smaller compact unit. And I think it actually looks really nice. And it's way better than the very first BRZ system. This actually looks modern. It's just smaller but I really like it. And then you even have like really nice little touches down here. I mean, the temperature and it's dual zone temperature and you even get a little STI start button because TS, what does that stand for? Tuned by STI. So of course, yes, you're gonna get the STI start button. Actually you even have the STI in the gauge cluster. Cool, so it's kind of an STI, just not completely, I don't know. Let's do it. And here we go. So we're starting in the mountainside town of Actually, I have no idea where we are, but we're about halfway along the route of the Targa Florio. And uh, apparently we got some really nice roads ahead of us, so I can't wait. Can't wait. Oh my gosh, I feel so low. That was a Fiat 500L, and I was looking up to it. <laughs> it's the only time you'll ever actually look up to a 500. Steering, it just feels so much... This whole thing just feels like... Like this is a proper sports car. The WRX is a rally car, even though they've definitely tilted it more towards the pavement side of the equation. I mean, it's set up basically for tarmac stages. That is the WRX you buy today. This one though, this is like, it's like a little baby Porsche. Yeah! <laughs> Now we have to be careful because as we found out earlier in the WRX is the roads, eh, they're a little slick. So we're not really gonna push this to the limit. Uh, also, they are public roads, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this car. It's funny because on paper, this car makes no sense in the current market. Yeah, let's build a small two-door sports car with a manual that'll sell <laughs> but I'm so glad they did unlike the WRX we just drove which is one trim level down from the GT this vehicle is the top trim for the BRZ and uh, you're gonna spend the money for it this is still I think a very affordable package but you're still gonna spend a little over 36,000 including destination but for $36,000, you get one of the most fun cars to drive on the market today. Let's talk about the shifting feel here. It is incredibly precise. We're talking like almost Miata levels of precision here. It is 
absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, the WRX is pretty good too, but the WRX has a very different feel. It's well gated and it does have a decently short throw, but this one, it's next level. Now you might notice I am not talking about fuel economy with either of these vehicles, and there's a good reason for that. I'm actually purposely not talking about it too much. I'm just gonna address it with this. Any car you buy, if you drive it aggressively, you are gonna be nowhere near the target MPGs. And on a vehicle like the WRX and a vehicle like the BRZ, you are not gonna be hitting those mileage targets. Now they can be used as a barometer, but if you're not driving this and say a GTI back to back, you know, what are you really measuring? You're gonna like, oh yes, when you're driving on your daily commute, that is, you know, that shouldn't be your buying decision if you're looking at a car that's a fun sports car. Because fun sports car does not tell me that you're driving at 55 miles per hour with a very steady throttle for an hour. Does it? So why would you care about that? Now, obviously, better MPGs are always good, and these vehicles are definitely right in where they kind of should be, and that's fine. But, you know, ah, as the world is moving towards electrification, I'm finding myself caring less about the MPGs of these petrol-based cars. Because, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, they all get crummy gas mileage when you're aggressive on the throttle. I mean, really, really bad gas mileage. Yet the EPA ratings are all about cruising at 55, and who, who cares? I mean, if you're talking an enthusiast vehicle, that should be the last thing that you're considering. And I say that knowing that all these manufacturers are hitting their MPG targets. You know, they're all within the federal requirements. So they're all good. Let's talk power, 228 horsepower in this little car, which, you know, you're like, yeah, that's not a lot of horsepower, but also keep in mind, this thing weighs just over 2,800 pounds. That is a featherweight by today's standards. So uh, should they throw turbo and add all this power to it? Yeah, but you're adding complexity and you're adding, uh, honestly, you're adding things I don't think this car needs. I think this level of horsepower is great for this car. If you want to have more horsepower, well then you're gonna have to talk about better brakes. You're gonna talk about different tires and then you're, you're completely changing the characteristic of the car. And this thing is just such a, it's such a beautiful moment in car development because it just kind of gets everything right and it's all balanced. In fact, no. I'll tell you this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stake a flag right here and say this car does not need a turbo. It doesn't. You want a turbo? Go get a WRX or buy a Porsche, you know? Uh, buy something that's properly fast that has all of the support equipment. This car, once you add a turbo and you upgrade everything else to kind of go with that turbo, you're now talking like, what, 45, 50 grand? Yeah, buy something else. Don't ruin this. Okay, I guess right here, but oh no, power kicks in. Oh yeah, woo! Unlike the WRX, the BRZ here actually has a limited slip differential in the back. Uh, so it does a much better job of hooking up for power as you're coming out of the corners. Again, it just plays to the fact that this is a more proper sports car than the WRX. Again, whoa, shit. Slippery. Got to be careful. These roads are so slick. Yeah, they are. Dicey. So in the WRX, I was talking about understeer, oversteer. Cars like this are more designed to have more of an oversteer characteristic. So when you're going into a corner and you kick that back out, you can do it with throttle or with braking, but whatever, it's a little bit more um, apt to rotate. And that makes the car handle so much better because you can rotate the vehicle under throttle. The problem is, is you can also lose your butt very quickly, uh, which makes for, you know, trickier driving. There is a traction control system in here, and yeah, it did kick in there, so that was very helpful. It does actually keep you out of trouble, or it tries very hard to. One of the biggest changes with this TS is they've moved to an adaptive suspension setup. Unlike the WRX GT, which has an adjustable suspension setup, this one actually has adaptive suspension. Now, you can't adjust it, but what it will do is it'll read the road surface and determine how the dampers should be set up. 
and it does it without any need for input. It just makes the driving better. So the system that they went with was a Hitachi. Yeah, Hitachi. Uh, they make a really cool shock, and that's what they've employed here. It is a mechanical-based system, so there's no extra electronics, but it was one of the few shock designs that could fit inside this tiny package. They have very little room in the front suspension to package anything big and fancy, uh, but the Hitachi units did the job. And do they improve the handling of this car? I would say, yeah, they do. And this car already handled really well. So at the Isle of Man one year uh, during the TT races, I met Guy Marvin and you know, I had never met somebody like that in person. I mean, Guy Martin, I think, yeah, I've met like Travis Pastrana and all these other guys who are extreme sports guys, but they don't seem to have the specter of death hanging over them quite like an Isle of Man TT racer does. I mean, so many people die in that race. And the one thing that I came away with was just that he had like the specter of death hanging over him. So imagine all the people that ran this race, they probably were just, I mean, is that like, you know, as a human, you're challenging your own mortality? Like what the heck? Anyway, this is really fun. Traction control kicks in. <laughs> See, you can't get way over your head with this setup. In track mode, you do get more slip, but it still jumps in there if you get a little too crazy. So, you know, there is a safety blanket there. driven both the WRX and the BRZ on some amazing roads here in Italy. Now, which one would I buy? Well, that's a tough call. If I needed more of a jack of all trades, I would definitely go with the WRX. However, if I was buying a fun car just for the sake of fun, like sporty weekends, that kind of stuff, I would pick the BRZ. And I think that this particular BRZ, the TS, is definitely the ultimate. I mean, this thing, the balance is great, the looks are great, it feels great, the seats are super comfortable, and it has just enough tech, especially with the addition of EyeSight and Adaptive Cruise Control. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos, make them for you. Hope you enjoy them. And I'm definitely enjoying Italy. I do not want to go home.